Okay guys, on this one, I didn't go the way I said I was going to go. I, was, I didn't use the flat, um, just the steel flat. I went with these little hangers. Um, it's got the rubber bushings in here. Now these, these don't give a whole lot and that's kind of like what I want where I'm going to put the turbo at. They've just got the rubber bushing here inside and then it's got, these were two separate pieces obviously. These welds are not mine and thank goodness because they look worse than this. A friend of mine at work did this for me. So thankfully, it's going to work. It's going to serve the purpose. Um, I'm not looking to have something fantastically welded with perfect little dimes uh, underneath the car. It doesn't really matter. It's going to hold. So this is what it is. It's come up. This side here is going to be mounted to the frame rail. And here in a little bit, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And on this side here, I actually got it to where it's mounted on the spare tire cavity inside. And so the spare can still be mounted in there. Um, the, the bolts just stick a little bit through it's not going to interfere with anything so this this is this side for it and it's the same type of hanger with the bushing and then as you can see it comes up and i've already welded this piece on here it's a reducer so the exhaust coming out is going to be two inch that's at the obx header then right there i expand out to two and a quarter and then by the time it gets here this is two and a half inch pipe and it's two and a half, I believe, out too. But it didn't really matter past it because you're only talking about 14 inches of pipe there. Which I believe I'm going to Y-pipe out and give it dual exhaust in the back. Just for looks. It's not going to affect performance or anything like that. And then I'm going with, as opposed to running just regular flanges, I'm going with the V-bands. This bracket here, if I ever need to take it off, I just take these four bolts off and then bring it up and then get it over the lip of this uh, V-band. If I had a regular flange on here, there's no way I could do that. So I like the versatility of being able to take this thing completely off so that I can do maintenance or whatever I might want to do to it. But anyway, I'm going to get it mounted up there and I'll show you that in just a second. And going on up in here, there's the frame rail that we bolted that bracket to on this side. And I'll show you the other side. And this is from directly under the turbo. And you see here's the other bracket. And then the bushing is on this side. So that this can keep like an angle. To kind of follow the angle of the, uh, the trunk. And we got plenty of room here. Move this light around. We got plenty of room here for the downpipe. Which I'm going to actually probably tee off and go from one side and to the other to have a dual exhaust appearance. It's not going to hurt performance wise. I mean, you're only talking about an extra two by six feet of pipe. It's going to be just tips on the end. Um, but uh, just for looks. This is from inside the trunk. Uh, there's the two washers to distribute the load across the thinner uh, material of this uh, trunk compartment and uh, there it's joined with some similar ears on the bottom there I had to put a uh, bushing in between one of them and the trunk uh, because of the angle of the bracket so this is filming from behind and under the car there's the real right tail light as you go up underneath here you'll see the turbo mounted and this is where it's going to be sitting. I'm only going to be clocking the compressor housing counterclockwise to bring this neck up. But you can see it's mounted. You hear that little... The pipe is going... When the pipe is attached, it'll raise it up enough to it won't do that when it's uh, going over bumps. As you can see, this is that short HKS mushroom pod filter. See, you only got about a finger gap away. But what I intend to do is I'm going to take this coupler and I'm going to cut about half an inch off this side and half an inch on this side so that it can be pulled closer to the compressor. I'm not, obviously these wheels don't turn. I'm not worried about contact. But I'd like to get it further away for, for um, water splash when water jets up here. I'm going to be installing a kind of a guard here. and uh, But still, I want it away from here. So anyway, this is it from the bottom. You can see uh, the pipe uh, is up there. Like this, there's the pipe. It's got the V-band clamp. And I'll run my pipe piping from here on up. 
And now you can see after I've shortened up this coupler by a half inch on this side, half inch on this side, it is now, instead of just having finger distance from here like that, it's now got more than two fingers distance in between it. So again, still going to be worried about um, water shedding on this side. And that's why I'm going to put that little uh, shield right here. Uh, but outside of that, uh, that's that's far enough way back, no contact whatsoever. That ought to work out really good. Um, on the downpipe, I was telling you that I'm basically going to have it come down like this. This is the pipe. And as you can see, um, I'll have some heat shielding here like I do uh, along the center of the car in the exhaust um, valley. And it's going to come down here. I'll probably have it stopped right here and then it'll tee out for over here. And then of course, once this tow hook here has been uh, obviously removed, that'll open up the cavity right here for it to, for it to be uh, for a pipe to come here as well. We'll have a hanger up here and all that good stuff. But anyway, that's it pretty much. Um, as you can see, of course, this pipe isn't welded in or anything like that, but it's it's bolted up in there fairly sturdy if you go pretty much to the side of the a side look here you can see that as far as height it's up as far as you could expect something this is going to have a 90 on it to come down this is the old return and then at top it's got a 45 that's going to jump over this subframe here and then feed forward All right and so here it is with the tire off again um the main con the concern was the contact with the tire uh being up high enough uh this is as high as the rear subframe on the car as high as the stock muffler would be albeit a little bit further back that way so you know as far as water submersion obviously any driving through deep flood waters this is not a good idea anyway but with this filter being this low yeah you're going to really need to pay attention driving through you know regular rain and stuff like that that's not a concern it's uh you know kind of navigating any deep waters which you would normally be okay driving your other car that had the filter up in the engine bay yeah you're gonna have to give some thought to it but uh and and i guess you could run like an am style you know type um maybe route the filter back towards the rear of the car maybe get a little bit up higher as possible but right now this is what we're going to run standing from the side of the car as you look through the tire of course this is up in the air you can see the red pod filter through the tire through the wheels rather on the outside and a shot of the back uh yeah you're not really going to be able to see it for the most part, the only thing you probably throw it off is the uh, red pod filter. But as you can see, if we go down to this level, you can see the height of the tire and where the uh, little downpipe will shoot off at and then tee out. So, but at any rate, it, it's going to be hidden decently. Of course, on this side, the uh, pipe that's going to be coming out there is going to have a tip on it. It's going to hide it for a good, good amount. And then, of course, like I said, in that cavity over here is going to be another tip. So that's the shot of it from behind. 